Dude, the sound of my own voice. What a safe place that is, man. That's why I podcast. I listen, I listen to these on repeat. Like, my yeah. voice hurts sometimes from talking too much, and then I'll p- put in my own show. Listen to me. It's yeah. great. I'm the guy who invented the thing that's gonna take us out of this place. If you could read my mind, you would know what kind of pajamas I want when it comes to bedtime. Footy, 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 footy pajamas. Footy, 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 footy pajamas. Booty, 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 booty pajamas that let me be what I want to be. <laughs> that would have been so impressive. Marcus, what is this show? Um, this is, let me pitch this to you. This is the idea show where we uh, just kind of pitch ideas that we have that week and uh, we tell the, great the hilarious jokes. I don't want to say that because they're usually not funny at all. <laughs> I laugh every time, dude. No, here's no Ian. No, okay. Let me pitch this idea to you. Don't make jokes to make other people laugh. Make jokes that you think are legitimately funny. And then and just then, laugh. And then, be the and loudest then, at laughing. Your and own then joke. and then have a contagious laugh. And also, you then find the people who have the same sense of humor as you. That's like so, fair. like I've always said this for like for a long time. As like a joke, be like, oh, I make jokes that I think are funny. That way I can entertain myself. And then if you guys laugh, great. If you don't, I still thought it was funny and enjoyed my joke. But the thing is, is you also find people with the same sense of humor as you because they're the people who laugh very hard at the stupid jokes or good or whatever kind of jokes you're making. Mm -hmm. So that's like actually a pro tip. Like make jokes that you find legitimately funny and you can find people who have the same sense of humor as you. That makes sense, I guess. Yeah. For a do, you have, nerd? do you have a sneak peek for your pitch? No, like, why? D- mine's buck wild, and f- it can't be done. Like, it's a great idea, I think. can never be done. <coughs> really? Yeah. Okay. So, I guess before we get into our pitch, though, uh, we got Matt's majestic mind from last episode. We're not even going to read it. One, because Marcus doesn't have internet. <laughs> That's debatable. That's the main reason. Two... Oh, no. I mean, we can use our phones, but I, I don't mean, think that's the main reason. The main reason is because we both had bullcrap garbage ideas last episode, and Matt. Um, no, Matt said, said no. Here's here's what Matt said. Mm, Marcus, you probably should have like had more of an idea Matt behind that. No, no, watch this. This is this is exactly how Matt sounds. Well, Marcus, you should have had a great idea. Um, uh, I was really proud of you, and you just really didn't flush anything out this time. But phenomenal, Ian. I hate you. <laughs> And your idea, it's stink trash. I couldn't think of anything, sorry. That's pretty much it. No, he essentially said we didn't, we gave him a short episode. Mm -hmm. He uh, put me on blast for singing a Justin Bieber song. He did say that he felt like both of our ideas were fine. (coughs) Sorry, we didn't give him a lot to work with. That's pretty much it. That's okay. So, who's going first? I don't know. Do you, do you want to go first? Are you really excited about your pitch? How good do you think yours is? Because I got a text okay. of, of being a little braggadocious, if you will, from Ian about last week when he was dying of the plague, and I also was dying of the plague. Huh? You sent a text, I don't know if you remember this, saying that I had to bring my A game because you were going to ball it. I did. I did. Because I was, <laughs> I was high off of being Drunk. sick, and I thought my idea was really good, really killer. Because I, I was high off of... I was so, high off of dude, crack cocaine. <laughs> Whoops. I was high off of watching Boy Meets World for an entire week being sick. Did you just watch straight through that, Jank? Like, the whole thing? No, not the whole thing. Oh, dude, that have been so good. I, because I had already watched a couple of seasons not too long ago, season, like, one and two. So I jumped in. I think it was their... Oh, what year of high school was it? Actually, I think I jumped in on their senior year of high school is when I started watching it. I was a little farther in. But then I watched all the way through the rest of it. I love Boy Meets World. I just, yeah. like, because I started watching it when I moved in, and I just, like, got to, I think the last one I remember seeing was the one where they go to, like, that, or Shaw, or Corey gets made fun of for being whipped, essentially. And that's why they won't let him play poker. Yeah. And then they I go to that, that club one. thing. Yeah. 
Like, that was the one that, like, I think I saw the most recent. <coughs> What's your favorite episode? I couldn't tell you that. I really, really, really like Shallow Boy. Which one's that? It's the one where there's, like, the guitar player in front of the shop that Alan buys, that the Matthews buy. Mm-hmm. And then she's, like, really pretty, but she sings all the happy songs. And then Eric goes oh, out with her and then yeah. breaks up with her. And then she writes sad songs. and everybody, Like, she blows up. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, like, it's just about songs about how much she hates Eric. Yeah, and I then, remember that episode. Um, it's also the same episode where Topanga has to babysit, and then, um, uh-oh, I might just set an alarm. Um, anyway, Topanga has to babysit, and Corey comes over and lets the kid break all the rules, so she, like, gets scared that he's going to be a bad dad. So she, like, freaks out on one yeah. of them, but, like, he doesn't put it together. And the best thing of the whole... Sh- no, I'm not going to... Never mind. Go watch Shallow Boy, the episode of Boy Meets World. <laughs> I remember that episode, though. Ian, do you want to go first? Because you think yours is good. Okay. Do you think yours is good still? Sure. I think mine's a good idea that literally it's impossible. All right. So, my idea... It's like uh, I don't want to call it a children's story, but it's kind of... It's like... Uh, I picture it like... A, an old-fashioned radio drama. An all-ages story. Yeah. To, like, it's appropriate for kids, but, like, adults can enjoy it. Yeah. And kind of, like, like I wrote it kind of thinking of, like, an old-fashioned radio drama type of show. And, like, um, anyway, so the prologue I have written down. I have, like, a page. <laughs> of Excuse stuff. me. I won't read the whole page. But it takes place in 1953 in Britain. Um, a boy is left with his grandmother and little sister after both his parents were killed in the war. Uh... World War Two, and uh, <laughs> answer my first question. Thanks, bro. It's pretty dark. <laughs> no, I was literally about to ask. I was gonna. Then I was gonna, okay. I You're had two questions. Which war? No, I had two <laughs> questions. I was no. I was about to say that was World War Two, right? <laughs> and then I was gonna be like, if I'm wrong, cut that out. No, no we got wait, it. No, it was, no, it was no, World no, War Two. No, no, it was. Uh, I hate you. <laughs> Never mind. Um, his father was killed in action. Uh, his mother was killed during a bomb raid. Um, on what on London? They what lived. couldn't she fight? Sexist. Okay, it's I'm, 19, I'm done. I'm done interrupting. Ni- Go for it, w- it. Anyway, so they they lived in London, and then after the war, or after their parents got killed, they moved out onto a farm with their grandma. Ooh. And then they find this w- sick wardrobe. No. In the upstairs, they go inside said wardrobe. Nope. It takes them to this fantasy land, called. That's wait, a bogus idea. Wait, Dude, wait, I think wait. That'd be terrible. Wait. Well, let me just say called this time, because I said card instead of called. <laughs> called Narnia. Narnia. Nope. All right. Sorry. Okay. Yeah, I'm good. legit done interrupting. Go ahead. You're good. Um, so after the boys, uh, after the passing of the boy's mother, his grandmother took him and his little sister to live in the country a few miles outside of the city. Anyway, blah, 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 blah. So um, everyone was happy the war was over. They lived. They lived there for a while. By the way. The kid's name is Bartimaeus. Don't ask me why. It's that name, name just popped into my head. Um, and it's his, Bartholomew. And his sister's name is Abigail. Uh, the boys. Do they call him Bart? Probably. Uh, the boy's 11 years old. This, his sister, I don't know, maybe seven. I didn't get that far. Um, <laughs> <coughs> well, I mostly focus around the kid, the, the boy. Um, oh, so you actually are a sexist. <laughs> so... Uh, this paragraph, uh, he hears his, uh, the, his grandma singing a lullaby to his sister, and uh, it's at night, and um, and he kind of thinks to himself, you know, that he really wants to, you know, uh, what do I have written here? Let me get that. Uh, that he really just wants to get out for the night. Like he's just, he's tired of, you know, um, of, uh, I don't know. You know, he's been through a lot. Anyway, he just wants to go on some kind of adventure and get away from everything. Um, and, uh, let's see. And his there, name was a, there was a specific part I wanted to read. But anyway, so, um, basically, um, Bart sneaks out. Of the, he, he sneaks out, and uh, he... Uh, he he goes wandering off into the woods because they're out in the country. And, um, um, 
I'm trying to figure, I'm trying to figure out how to, how to really pitch this because I kind of just started writing a story and it's not really a pitch. But I just tell stories. My so, pitches are just, let me tell you a story. And yeah. then like the boring parts, I can say, this is roughly what happens. That's what I usually do yeah. for the past like 18 episodes, episode. yeah. <laughs> except for like last one. So anyway, so, so Bart creeps out of the house. He's hiking through the woods. Um, he starts, like, hearing these noises and stuff. And, you know, like, when you're a kid and you're going through the, you know, you're outside, you know, like, everything, every twig snap is twice as loud and everything, you know. And only when you're a kid. Definitely not when you're a 20 years old adult who owns a house. You don't get frightened of noises you hear. Oh, no, for sure. Ever. When you're 20 years old in a house, Marcus, that's when you have to take cardboard boxes and trap bats who are on the and, ceiling and, and go commando on a couple of bats <laughs> and throw them out the door after, after you do your podcast <laughs> yeah, this one you gotta like not be afraid of anything that's in the blooper reel you can watch that later no it's not oh uh, dude why did we turn the camera on I don't know I think I suggested that <laughs> I can't believe we didn't do that it's stupid oh, that makes me like actually sad now it does make me kind We of mad. missed out on the best opportunity ever. That would have been the only thing that actually people cared about. Probably. Was watching us panic about a bat. Anyway, um, so he's creeping through the woods. He's hearing all these noises. Um, and he's got a <sighs> walking stick in his hand. And he has a little pocket knife that his father gave him. And all of a sudden, he turns around. Just as a heads up, I think you actually... Thus, to this point, are kind of sort of pitching an, an actual episode of Adventures in Odyssey that I've heard. Really? I'd be okay if it was kind of like Adventures in Odyssey. But anyway, um, he turns around, and there's like this this huge monster behind him. I'm not even going to describe it because it's not important. And he starts like... Can I describe it? Beating the crap out of this monster. Go ahead. It's like 8-7. Mm-hmm. Excuse me. Sort of like built um, uh, in like a very triangular like shape where it's like huge at the shoulders but has like small hands. Has like a gorilla esque like arms where it's like opposable thumbs and whatnot and it's like huge and kind of like human gorilla esque but then turns into like spindly, spidery almost um, crab like legs. Uh, I kind of like at the torso joints. Has ridiculous horns. Like stupid, ridiculous horns, like, like the devil ones type like horns? no, like uh, like or the like, stupid like, ones from Loki's helmet in Thor. Okay. That like, pfft, like the stupid looking ones. Okay. Oh, excuse me. I I, I kind of just wanted to do that. I thought that'd be fun <laughs> to make up a monster just now. No, that's cool. So it actually fits really well with where the story's going. So oh, he's fighting yeah. this monster. He's just beating the crap out of this like giant, ridiculous monster. And he's winning. Yes. Yes. Hmm. So it's a fictional, made-up, imaginary monster. You're close. Okay, keep going. No, I'm, I'm excited about this, actually. He's, uh, um, he's fighting it, and uh, he's got his knife, his staff, and then um, all of a sudden there's more monsters. There's like 15 other monsters behind, behind this one, and um, he's getting ready to charge at them, and then he hears something behind him again. Turns around, and it's his grandmother standing there with a torch. Oh, and fantasy it. grandma. <laughs> oh, like, that actually, like, got me pumped. <laughs> no. I'm excited about this. And then and it shows back behind him. There's nothing there now. The monsters are gone. And uh, the grandma asks why he was uh, uh, waving his knife in the air like crazy, you know, because she had been watching him for a while. And he said he was just fighting a monster. Day. And then... Uh, She's like, okay, time to go back to bed and, like, mm, so drag him off to bed. So you're just writing a story about me when I was a child. No, so, here's the thing. This, the monster was imaginary. And, like, you read Calvin and Hobbes as a kid, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, that was, like, my favorite thing to read. You know how he would go on all those adventures? And they were real? They were real in his mind. Like, not just, like, imaginary pretend, but they were, but they were fake. The story is is this kid going on the, all all these adventures that like it's it's hard to describe like I I don't know how I could describe it but like it's real <coughs> only to him and like anything that happens 
Like, only he can see it. It's real, completely only to him. And I feel like now I'm thinking there's a movie kind of like this, but I don't know. But anyway, but it's it's imaginary. So, like, Ian, can I say something? his grandma just sees him, you know, waving a stick in the air or whatever. Ian, can I say something? What? In my backlog of pitches, I have Are essentially there? the same idea. <laughs> but pitch differently. Like, I might use it someday. Uh, if I fine. knew it off the top of my head, I would use it right now and we can compete with, like, essentially the same idea premise, but, like, <laughs> different thoughts. Yeah. But I don't know it off the top of my head. That's funny that you have the same idea. But <laughs> anyway, so, yeah, so it's basically about this kid going on these adventures. It's about, and the kid's actually named real. Marcus. And it's just about no. my life because that's what I did as a kid. And sometimes as an adult. <laughs> I'd be lying if I... I mean, I own a lot of Nerf swords, and I'd be lying if occasionally I don't pick up a Nerf sword and fight something that's not there. <laughs> I did that when I was maybe seven. And 20. No, but I did do that up, up through when I was like 12. And 17. Nope. Gosh. <laughs> Man, LARPing... Does LARPing not sound like the coolest thing in the whole world to you? No, dude, I did that all the time when I was a kid. But, like, like does it sound like, like a cool thing as an adult? <laughs> Sure. As okay. long as I'm not by myself, because then I look like an idiot. I mean, I do it in my house, and by in my house, sometimes on my roof, well, in my old house, when, as an 18-year-old high schooler, college student. The dog is barking, idiot. You have to edit that out. That's fine. Yeah. So anyway. this is just about me as a kid. Well, I mean, kind of me too. But anyway, essentially, it's just about this kid, and he goes on these adventures, and like I kind of want to then eventually like. Tied into his sister starts going on the adventures with him. And I think it'd be interesting to somehow make it like somehow even though the monsters are are in are in his mind and imaginary, like somehow they somehow become so. real, like to where like he could, you know, get a cut and he actually got you know, he gets a scrape on his arm from fighting the monster. You well, know, it's not real. I think but I feel like that's been done in some kind of movie, so oh, I don't want to go that far. I'm sure has been. But, like, you could also, like, just do it to where, like, there's, like, real, real world allegories. So, like, he could be, he could fight a monster, and the monster could be, like, a bully. So, like, if he gets, mm -hmm. like, a scrape, like, so, like, in the fiction, is this a movie? Oh, you said audio drama, right? Yeah. So, in, in the fiction, he's fighting a monster that's, like, roaring at him and stuff. But it's just, like, a bully at school. So, like, he gets physical bruises from fighting this monster... But the real world allegory is this monster is just a bully. Yeah. Okay. And so like yeah. and like you could just That's find like or, or stuff yeah. like that or like you're running away from from a like a Indiana Jones style like thing and it's just you got stuck on the street like you can't get off the street and there's a car coming at you like you know like yeah. you can find allegories for these things and I think that like in a way it'd be fun and this is just me talking again mm -hmm. but um no throw, to, out, like, throw out whatever you want. We don't say we, we we you cleverly allude to the allegories, but you never say it. So like you never say like oh like he goes home and the mom's concerned like grandma's concerned about him because like oh you have a black eye, and she's concerned. But we never say oh there's a bully at school. Mm -hmm. So yeah, like, like to the, it, so like to, to the where, listener it's yeah, it's yeah, it, to, it to, happened through the yeah yeah or to the listener like even though like okay so it's clearly all imaginary. But he clearly has a real black eye because the grandma asked about it. So, like, then you could do, like, fun th fan theory things. Be like, okay, what's the monster he fights? What's this specific monster? What's the allegory for that? Yeah. You know what I mean? And then, like, you can, like, try to think of stuff. And then, I don't know, it becomes, like, a little bit of a piecing stuff together detective game of the viewers. I yeah. don't know, that just sounds like a fun thing to me. Oh, yeah. No, I'm I super psyched about the idea. <laughs> I think it'd be fun to write. Because like you said, like you said, it's basically your childhood. That's kind of like I was thinking too. It's like you could write so many things from your childhood, you know, from your own child as a writer. And I feel like when you write stuff from your own your own experience in life, it just makes it interesting, you know. So. Um, I had like another. Oh, so did you want to do like, do you want to, um, is this one story or short stories? It'd sort be of like a series. About, yeah, so be, uh, are they linear? Like, so, or is it, so, like, is there, like, a big overall arc, or is it kind of, like, it'd be kind of, like, villain of, villain of the, the weaker, uh, sort of, imaginary story of this specific episode, and then the next episode in the series would be a different imaginary story, or yeah. are they connected? but there'd also be episodes where, like, 
part one and two are like this episode covers this and the next episode comes back to the you know you know it it what am I trying to say like uh, a two parter it, it relates back to the previous episode and stuff and maybe even three or four parts or maybe like there's a monster that shows up in episode four shows up again in episode 23 and then is somehow relevant in episode 50 you get what I'm saying where like there's like you know like in a show sometimes each episode stands on its own but there is like an overall story arc that's every so many episodes you know there's like something kind of pieces together and um uh, uh this is like the last like actual question I have so like do you want it to be so I'm assuming he he doesn't when he imagines in this world when his imagination is going crazy he doesn't like is he holding this pocket knife so like he's holding his pocket knife in real life yeah but in his head is it like a sword or something tight yeah you could probably okay so like does he ever does it ever flip and like is he ever like different here so like let's say like I'm imagining personally, it's so like this first one when he gets in the fight to this monster, he's probably has like a sword and like a staff and might be in like m- medieval fantasy armor or something. Are, th- are you going to like tell stories where like sometimes he's just as like an Indiana Jones adventurer and sometimes it's sci fi or is it always going to kind of be w- one specific style of thing? I don't know. Like, I kind of wanted it to be one specific style of thing because I was thinking of Calvin and Hobbes. And because Calvin's uh, usually like Space Man Spiff character. Yeah. Where he's like, he's always that same character going on. And I was thinking of that. But you could do it where he was like a different character each time uh, in his imagination. I mean, um, I, I was just wondering. I'd probably go with like where he's the same character. You could do the same name. Yeah. But then like sometimes yeah, it's fantasy, be. sometimes it's sci-fi, sometimes it's mm-hmm. whatever, war. Like a, I don't know. The war movie. Man, I really hope you can't hear those dogs barking outside on the mic, because that would suck. Probably not. I hope so. Whoops. You hope so? I don't want to call attention to it, but... No, oh. I, I think it's fine. I don't, I don't think you probably hear it. No. Um, like, yeah, that's a cool... Like, I, I can I can get behind stories like that, because, yeah, that was my childhood. And adulthood. Yeah. Just less sure. so now. For sure. I mean, I for a long time, I did have a sonic screwdriver that I kept in my car and would hold the red lights till they turn green. I know, you'd bring it into youth group sometimes when we were younger. I was a genuine nerdo. Yep. Was, not anymore, and I'm a cool kid. <laughs> I played Magic the I'm Gathering. I'm a cool kid now. <laughs> I played Magic the Gathering at work the other day with somebody. And um, the next day, I was trying to pitch it off to somebody. Like, no, Magic the Gathering, a cool game for cool people. Not a, it's like, not a nerd game. It's a cool game for cool people played by cool teen, cool young people. <laughs> not for nerds. Well, I mean, nowadays it's quote unquote cool to be a nerd, you know. Yeah. It's when was the last time? You, when was the last time you walked into a coffee shop to a bunch of people playing Magic the Gathering and legitimately thought those are some cool dudes? <laughs> those those are the kinds of people that I want to be best friends with. Honestly, never. Yeah. See, that's what I'm saying. So it's cool. <laughs> it it's cool to be a nerd in the sense that oh man, I saw I saw Justice now. League. I saw Justice League and I wore yeah. I wore a Batman hoodie to Justice League, that, I'm kind of nerdy, it's not cool to be like, actually nerdy, yeah, it's not cool to, act, to be actually nerdy in the sense that, hey Marcus, what's your times tables, hmm, it's a good question, Marcus, what's the sixth Pokemon, oh, you mean Charizard, that one, oh, yeah, so, mm, cool, cool, yeah, not cool, I actually, I guess that would be a bad time to admit <laughs> that, when I went to college, I actually majored in Klingon, <laughs> <laughs> I gave somebody a heart. Uh, there's a. I have a coworker who's kind of a nerd, who he was talking about. Him and his friend were both trying to get the same girl when he was in high school. Yeah. And he's like, he's like, and I don't know. He's like, I never saw the note, but apparently he wrote her a note. He's like, and I don't know why or for whatever reason she said she couldn't read it. I don't know if she didn't like him in that way and she knew and he, he, she knew it was like a love letter. Yeah. So she like refused to read it. I don't know if he had horrible handwriting. Like he's like, I don't know to this day. And I was like, oh, so it was Elvish. And I was giving a hard time for being a nerd. <laughs> At school, I was like, hmm, there's an Elvish letter. But I don't know. We'll see. I mean, maybe. Who knows? I, I wouldn't put it past him and his friends to know at least a little bit of Elvish, knowing that person. That's fair. I don't know who you're talking about, but yeah, you don't know. I think you're for it. All right. So Marcus, are you ready for your ridiculous commercial break? wild pitch? Oh yeah, commercial break. <laughs>
Ready? Go. I'm starving to death. Ian ate all my Doritos, which was my lunch for the day after tomorrow and the day after that and the day after that. So if you would be so kind to give us Doritos or money, that would be great. Preferably money. Or <laughs> freaking Doritos. If I got free Doritos because somebody's a fan of the show, I'd be like, <laughs> oh, dunk. Heck yeah. That's fair. I'd rather get money, though. <coughs> All also. right, so commercial breaks over. Marcus, be ready for your ridiculous, wild, okay. absurd, crazy. Okay, okay. Pitch. So th there's like a backstory to my pitch a little bit. I okay. uh, listened to this podcast that ended up getting canceled for kind of stupid, sort of legitimate, kind of stupid reasons. I'm not going to get into on this show, um, but the podcast was called. All the previous episodes are still up. There's just no new ones. Excuse me. It's called Cool Games Inc. I think I've talked about it on the show. This show. Before. Yeah, you told me about them. Excuse me. Cool Games Inc. was a show that originally started uh, because of a video game journalism website. And they um, would have people tweet in video game idea suggestions and they would make, they would pitch and make up video games kind of based off of these suggestions. And for the first few episodes, the hook was like, we'd have people who work at the company we work for or other companies, because it's a small community, you kind of know each other. Mm -hmm. You see each other at E3 and things. Um, come on to the show and me and, and the, co the two hosts would pitch that idea as a video game to them and then ask them to rate it and that kind of thing and they'd all flush it out together. It was all, all just supposed to be funny oh, yeah. and silly. So kind of similar to our show. Sort of, but like not in the same way, like at all. Like okay. if you listen, like you wouldn't listen to Cool Games and you'd be like, oh, just like, or listen to our show and be like, oh, just like Cool Games Inc. Um, even okay. though that's kind of what the grab bag is. So I guess if you only listen to grab bag episodes, maybe, sort of, you could draw similarities yeah. or a lot more but um one of the pitches on that show and this is kind of like where i'm legit like actually kind of just ripping off their show but we're going to riff off of it together more hopefully because okay. i don't have a ton prepared but i think it'll be a lot of fun to go the idea of this show or the game that was pitched was a video game where you are a a 40 year old middle um uh, man in his mid midlife crisis trying to work up the courage to get out of your car and go inside the gas station to pay for gas, but you have to work up the courage to walk past all of the cool teen skateboarders in the parking lot. <coughs> okay. So, here's my pitch. And this is, so like, I have like, legitimate social anxiety in the sense that like, where I don't know people and like, um, fast food restaurants and that kind of thing. Like when I'm putting, especially specific social situations like I panic and I don't know what to do and I usually like legit like fight or flight like just bail like yeah. like I'll leave the situation in like a sometimes embarrassing and awkward way um especially like when conflict's involved like mm -hmm. if I ever have to like tell people I'm wrong they're wrong or something like that like I, I don't do it like I've gone to fast food restaurants ordered food pulled up paid for all of my food gotten given the wrong food and not enough food for what I paid for and driven away and not said anything to them because yeah. it is so terrifying to me to say, hey, you screwed up real bad. I want the food I ordered. I mean, I, I've done the same thing. I so, don't know what you mean. Yeah. So, like, here's my, my pitch. It's a video game where you have an actual literal mic that you have to talk to and it's going to be to help people with, with social anxiety. So, but level one, level one, and it's just going to be all awkward social situations. <laughs> where sometimes not even like awkward social situations, but social situations you'll find yourself in where you have a controller so you can move your avatar around or, no, let's say freaking VR, right? So it's VR. So you got your headset on and you have like your vibe, but you also have a mic to where like the things you say, and this is why it's impossible, the things you say affect in game and people react like they do in real life. Okay. Right? And they talk back to you. So there's a level where I drive to McDonald's and I order my food and they give me the wrong food. And you, the only way you can pass the level is by getting the right food and having a social conversation with somebody. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, so like, I, and this is like where I think like we can collaborate. Like you come up with a level, I come up with a level. This can, so like, here's another thing. I got I just, a level. I go for it. <laughs> it's too ridiculous. It has to do with a pitch that Matt sent in 
Wild oh, no, 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 no. Yeah, so I literally, I was, dude, I was just thinking about that. No, what do you do when somebody uses a urinal right next to you? <laughs> yes. I just, I you just made go, a Wisdom Wednesday about this. Yeah. You gotta go in, in and like, you gotta use the you, urinal, you urinal with two people, with at least one person next to you, you get bonus points if there's two people next to you. <laughs> you get bonus, bonus points if it's a fat guy next to you. Dude, but like, there's oh, like think about like, great. yeah, like the, they're that like endless. Great. They're endless. Okay, so like one level, one level, you're um you're a middle-aged mom, and you gotta walk into your son's like, comic book store, and try to figure out like comic book and video game store, and figure out what games are appropriate for your 13-year-old child, what comics are appropriate for your 13-year-old child, and what ones they'll actually like. <laughs> And you have to like go up to the counter and talk to the comic book people who are also socially awkward. So it's kind of like, um, so this would be like a weird level where you're the socially like apt person dealing with, with a group of socially inept people, but there's a bunch of them and they're the worst. Like That's that sounds great. like an amazing idea to me. And again, it's impossible, but like I would play the mess out of a game. I love to talk, for, and you would be like, Marcus, you make a podcast. You talk triple the amount that Ian does on your podcast. Mm -hmm. How is like social interaction and like talking to people so hard for you? And I don't know, but a game where I can practice talking to people <laughs> and social interaction, and like, I would play the mess out of that. I would play it too, dude. Okay, I would play it because I kind of. You'd practice have, flirting. No, because I. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I just took, I took a spitball. My I, bad. Because I get some social anxiety too. And like, I will watch a show. We were talking about Boy Meets World area, earlier. I'll watch an episode of Boy Meets World. I will see how that relates to my current life. And then like, something will come up like that week in life. And I'll remember the way Corey or Sean handled it. <laughs> <laughs> Not all the time. <coughs> only if I can remember something from that episode that was good. Like, I tried to always apply TV shows to my real life. <laughs> so there you have it. Now I admitted why I only watch sitcoms ever. WWCMD. What would Corey Matthews do? <laughs> I'm sorry. I just, when I was a kid, I assumed that's what all nerds do. <laughs> you know, I got to say something, though, because you pitched this idea. I had a similar idea. This, it's funny because you had a similar idea to mine. I actually had kind oh, of next a, week we'll flip. <laughs> I had kind of a similar idea. If you're actually going to spoil your idea, don't do it because next I week we should flip it, legitimately. It, it had to do with a video game and certain generations of people who aren't good at things do, being able to like do these th same type of thing. Like I'm not going to spoil it. It's a little different, but it's like exactly the do, same. Do you have any more levels? Because like I can go on for days. Not off the top of my head, but I could probably think right. of something. What about this one? You're you're at the grocery store, freaking all of the um uh, all of the self checkouts. <coughs> Don't have a line because I have I have seen six open like actual like registers or whatever, and waited in like a twelve person line for the self checkout to not have to deal with another human. No, they're all broken, so you can't use one. You need the stuff you have. You go through the, uh, through the actual like aisle, and I have to talk to the cashier. They try to make small talk with you. You don't have to make small talk with somebody that you don't know, won't ever see again, and, and for some reason, if you're me, are never ready for it. Yeah, I know how that is. I am now, how never. About, how about if you, like, so, like, they make small talk with you, like, there's easy answers that get you through the level. <coughs> if you say extra stuff, you get extra points, and you get so like you know, mm, like so there's like a level with status. them. Yeah, so like if if you if you if, hit, if you're, on, you're them, if you hit on them, you get extra points. Yeah, because you're, you're smooth enough to deal. Yeah. With, with, hold on. <laughs> if you hit what on if them, what if you flirt on them and it fails? Yeah. If you if you hit on them in a not hard. creepy, bad, gross way, it's like, great. <laughs> but if there's like a little bit of awkwardness, it's an instant fail. And the, and the game disintegrates. The, the, the game just spits out of the computer. And poof, and like, we gotta re put this crap in. Try again, dog. You gross, That's stupid boy. So I feel like what you're pitching, though, is remember in the office when 
When Dwight creates the... When your wife the, plays a bunch of Second Life but yeah, loves it? Second, yeah, and then Jim <laughs> creates it. It's a real I game. Like yeah, I looked it up. Yeah, I, I made an account, and then I realized it was boring and stupid, so I quit. <laughs> I realized it was a trash game. And quit. <laughs> I'm trying to think of, like, other... Okay, this one, you have to, like, leave somewhere. It's so, like, there's no, like, paper towels or something like that. Or, like, mm. you use the last of the toilet paper and the thing. And then you have to go... And tell the people, hey, no, there's no you're out of toilet paper. <laughs> Hate that. That's the worst. I don't. I don't do it, which is a horrible thing to admit. A, yeah. <laughs> <coughs> I work at like a, I work at a coffee shop, and the thing is, is working at a coffee shop, you would think, wouldn't you would imagine it would help because people come up to me and people like we mess up a drink and they come back and they say, hey, you messed this up, and it's it is not awkward at all for me to say, my bad. We'll fix that. And then, like, I legitimately be like, hey, we'll take your name down. I'll write it down in the back so everybody can see it. Next time you come through, just tell us your name. Drink's on us. Like, not to worry about it, right? Mm-hmm. And, like, you know, like, figuring, like, when somebody comes to complain to me, not a big deal. Be like, oh, yeah, we can handle this. Like, like diffuse the situation. Apologize. Give them free stuff. Like, I can yeah. handle that like a champ. Doesn't matter. And you would imagine, because I've never, like, that it would work the same. Mm-hmm. And knowing that's how people are supposed to respond to me if I go to complain, that would, like, make me not scared, but it still terrifies me. Same with, like, the toilet paper thing. Like, I've had people come and say, hey, I used the last of the toilet paper. You ran out in the bathroom. Like, not a big deal. I'll go replace it. And it's not awkward at all for me to be like, oh, yeah, thanks for letting us know. I'll go get that right now. But you have to then do it to somebody? <laughs> it's so scary. Yeah. <coughs> okay, I got a level. Okay. But I, I, I need to know because I haven't figured. I, it's not super detailed. But, like, have you ever, like, you need something... Like, there's something on a shelf and you need it, or there's, you, you're at the grocery store and you need something. And there's, like, a group of people there. There's, like, something, and you have to ask them to move. And you just, no, I'll just skip it for the day. Because <laughs> you're not going to I don't ask actually them need move. that. It, when it's literally, hey, excuse me real quick, i got to grab this. Like, it's literally that simple. Yes. <laughs> There'd be a level like that. Or what about this? <laughs> this, this social dilemma. <laughs> you're at Menards. And they... You, you freaking need the wood that's, like, way up there. And they left that stupid ladder thing that they tell you not to use there. What do you do? Do you risk getting yelled at and using the ladder thing to get it yourself? Or do you ask, do you have to talk to another human willingly and ask them to get it for you? Social, like, that's scary. I've also, like, had to debate that. Be like, well, I don't want, like, getting yelled at's the worst. So if I use this thing to get yelled at, like, I'll get, like, real scared. I thought I saw something, like a person walk in that door. I got real scared, that's why. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it's like the worst. But then like, I don't want to go approach somebody who's doing their job and be like, hey, I've been in that like same hey, situation. I'm an idiot. Yeah. Can... <coughs> that's funny. That's my whole idea. Like if you don't have- That's great. Ooh, what about this one? Talking on the phone ever? Yes. Just ever? Like, for anything. Yeah, there's a hundred million levels that are just like, Hey, call this person on the phone. Don't sound like a putz. Go. Oh. <laughs> Hang up. Frick. Like, well, I want. I have something to say about that. Think about it. Like, old people get on us younger generation about texting and all that. But I want to <coughs> throw this out there. That, and I heard this from. I'm, I'll just admit it. I heard this originally on Blimey Cat when I was a kid. I gotta give credit where credit's due. I was a kid. Whatever. It's a dumb show. But anyway, I, mean, I, don't, I haven't seen it in a long time. It's. Kind I don't of know if it's still good. Anyway, do they still make it? I should probably shouldn't say it's a dumb show because we're we're on YouTube now and they're on YouTube. But oh well. Anyway, anyway, it's so, better than our show. So yeah, that's <laughs> I true. would I would argue that that's true. So <laughs> so um uh you know old people get on younger generation about texting. But if you think about it for a minute, like texting is just a form of writing a letter, but talking on the phone, just verbal communication and not actually seeing someone, is completely new. Like, that's really new. So so about the whole being terrified talking on the phone thing, like, that completely makes sense to me. You know? Um, like, am I, like, am I crazy there? Or does cool. that make sense? <coughs> yeah, it's, it's not new for us. I don't, yeah, well, that's what I'm like, saying. It is, like, it is like crazy for you. Phone because it is, is like a pretty new phenomenon. Like talking But not for phone. us. There's never been a point in either of our lives where talking on the phone should be awkward or weird because it's been around for as long as we've been well, alive and saying. a lot before it. Like, it hasn't been, a, like, whereas, like, sending a text message, like, thinking what you want to say, writing it down, sending it is, like, literally been around for as long as writing has. Talking on the phone's been around for, like, little over, well, 
a little over 100 years, I guess. So, <laughs> are we, you have a leg to stand on. I don't know. I just if had texting was invented there. like four years after phones and then people arguing. But the thing is, is like me and the people who have ever yelled at me for being bad at the phone or anything or like liking the text rather than phone call. Mm -hmm. The phone's also been around for their whole life and my whole life. Yeah. So it's like I mean, it's fair, but I just want to throw that. But yeah, that'd be a good level too, where you had to like talk on the phone. <laughs> or okay, how about this? How about you have a house like where you live, and when you come home, there's like bonus levels, and like the phone rings, or like there's a there's a message, and you listen to the message, you can choose to call the person back, and you get bonus points. If you don't call them back, there's some kind of penalty. That's Something good because like, like if you think about it that way, because like. like the, the one on the phone is so quick, and so many things can go good or bad so fast that, like, yeah. the idea of, like, the phone being, like, a mini level between actual <laughs> yes. levels, be like, hey, call somebody on the phone, or idiot. Or it could be, like, <coughs> side quests or whatever. Like, there'll just be phones in random places, <coughs> and a phone will just start ringing, and you can go and pick you can it choose up. to answer it. <laughs> Do you remember the episode of Boy Meets World where they're in the, they're, like, they got temp jobs in the mailroom, and yes. they're upstairs, <laughs> and Sean answers, answers the phone? The phone. <laughs> I'm out of, like, like, but you know what I mean? Yeah. This sounds no, like a great sure. idea that I would play the mess out of. Again, impossible. Can never be real. I mean, I think maybe down the road. I don't think anyone would ever make it because I think it's a silly game. Like, we find, we're finding it very entertaining. I don't think the majority no, of no, people no, no, would. No, 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 Maybe. I could be wrong. I think, no, I think that, like, if they, if they market this game correctly, like, if they market this game as, like, okay, so... I, I'm not, so I'm saying, like, this game needs to be less, f I know we're, we find it hilarious to think, like, it is funny for me to talk about how bad I am at social situations. Yeah. Like, that's funny, because we live in a social world, I have a job where I literally have to interact with people that sometimes I've never seen or spoken before, and talk to them and make small talk. Like, I have a job where I have to do that, mm -hmm. and sometimes I crush it, sometimes I'm really bad at it, and it, it is, it is awkward, I'm not 100% of the time great at it. However... To be on the other side when I'm not at work and knowing how to do these things, and especially a lot of the situations I've talked about, like have to talk on the phone, I have to do that for work sometimes. I have to do all these things for work. And so I'm on the other side mm -hmm. and it's awkward sometimes. Like sometimes I do a bad job or, or they, they don't like play off well or something and, and it's a little bit weird and awkward. Like that's how life works. Mm -hmm. But I understand it. But then being on the other side of that barista station or whatever, like, and all of a sudden, it being the most terrifying thing in the whole world. But, like, we, we pitch this thing as not as a joke, but as, like, a... Like, very serious. Do you have, like... Do you ever sometimes, like, go to flirt with a cashier and it's really awkward? Or do you ever sometimes have to talk on the phone and feel like you hang up and you're like, gosh, dang it. it. Like, if we pitch this as, like, an actual, like, get better at social so situations... You, you gotta pitch it like, like uh, a pharmaceutical commercial. Like, do you ever... <laughs> <laughs> Do you ever have to talk on the phone and it gets super... You know? Do you ever talk on the phone and sound like a total dunce? <laughs> have you ever Try had... this video game. Have you, have you ever... Have you, you ever have to talk on the phone and sound like a total dunce? Have you ever give, driven up to burrito chimes? We have to... We can't talk about, like, actual brand names. Yeah. Have you ever driven up to burrito chimes and gotten not the right food and been too embarrassed to tell them that? Like... Well, then, we got the game for you. <laughs> and then at the end, it's like, <laughs> it's like, it's like if you're still a dunce. If this doesn't actually fix any of your social anxiety, not our problem. You also sign a waiver. <laughs> Depression yeah. and suicidal yes. thoughts will happen at the end. <laughs> okay, okay, how about at the very end of the game, you beat the game, and the character kills himself. Ian? <laughs> what the heck? It's amazing. Because you just like to make fun of the whole social anxiety thing, like he finally yeah, gets millennials. fed up. With, yeah, he finally gets fed up with himself, and he kills himself. Or what about this? What about this? You beat the last level, and they turn around and say, "Just do the thing you just did in the game in real life, you big dumb idiot." Just go talk to a human. It's not that hard or weird or awkward. That can Why be do what you the make it? Called talk to a human. Talk. To <laughs> no, I think the game should be called "You big dumb idiot." It's not that hard. It's not that hard. That's what it's called. It's <laughs> not that hard. It's not that hard. That's, not that hard. <laughs> That's my pitch. Perfect. I'm done. That's great. Do you get anything else? No, I have nothing to add. Like Unless I'm, we want to keep coming up with levels, because I can do this all day. Yeah, like, I mean, okay, yeah, we'd make a 400-hour-long episode. Like, we, I would miss 
church tomorrow. What is it, episode 21? Episode 22 is going to be just us pitching <laughs> episode, levels. No, what do you, like, okay, legit, like, do you think we should flip, like, you pitch your idea similar to mine, I pitch my idea will, similar, yeah. okay, so cool. Mine, mine's really short, but it's kind of, yeah. Yeah, it's so, kinda, it's pretty so cool. next... Next episode, you guys know what to look forward to. Yeah, I hope. Next, so let's yeah, hope next you like this we're gonna, one. We're gonna if, flip ideas. If you guys are like, "This is trash garbage," then like, watch the prob- next episode. You probably cause... think the next thing about next. Yeah. <laughs> but let's do housekeeping. Thank you, uh, Matt Sampson, for uh, Matt's majestic mind, or M cubed, as we also call it. Yeah, Matt. Um. Uh, actually, here's the thing. Th- I'm sure that we we talked long enough and probably said enough stupid stuff for you to have like at least a paragraph to write this time. But um. I'd love for you to, to comment your own social situation that you'd want to be in this video game if we didn't cover it. Yeah. Like, that'd be cool. Uh, um, and we could just go ahead and throw that out there. Like, if any yeah, anybody are send it that, in. Yeah, yeah email us a, in and we'll, we'll uh, read our, it on the show. Uh, 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 let me pitch this to you at Gmail as yep. our uh, email address. And also, if you have, again, pitches for, like, the grab bag ideas, or something, yeah. just uh, send those right in. Um, you can vote if you want on who has, whose idea uh, was better. Who, yeah, vote, of course. We like that every you week. You always vote for me. You don't um, have to necessarily vote for Marcus unless you feel bad for him. That's yeah, totally I mean, fine. I understand. I'm the worst. I think you should all feel bad for me and give me money and votes. Um, <laughs> no, uh, thank you, um, Tim Schoenfeld, for the our theme, theme song. song. Um, thank you, Ian, for actually letting me uh, sing all of Baby last week. <laughs> I, I which, about shut the camera off. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Which was, again, the funniest thing in the whole world to me. That was like, not funny at all. Well, like, no, like, again, like, again, you make jokes to find people to have your own sense of humor. To where I showed to a bunch of people at work, we, uh, we had, like, a game day at work where we went in, like, off hours and, like, hung out in the store and played board games and stuff. Mm-hmm. And I showed them the start to the episode. And the ones who didn't laugh, I was like, yeah, I usually don't make you guys laugh at work. The ones who did laugh, I was like, oh, yeah, we actually get along and you laugh at my jokes and I laugh at your jokes at work. <laughs> so, like, there was, like, a legitimate, like, clear cut, you think I'm funny and work with me, you don't think I'm funny and work with me, that I was able to clearly make and see at work by who thought my joke, which I'm willing to bet most people probably don't think is funny, but it's the funniest thing in the whole world to me. Yeah, for sure. So. I think that's right. it. Um, Thank you guys for yeah. watching the show. Follow um, us on, on Instagram at Let Me Pitch This To You. Follow us on Twitter at <laughs> Poop Garbage Name. Or however uh, uh, I can't do it as good as Marcus does. <laughs> Yeah, there we go. I'm sorry. I'm very in. I'm very uncoordinated. We were just discussing this earlier. Uh, my skill set is I'm white. <laughs> no, that's it. I'm so. kidding. Oh, yeah, hey, Ian, what are your talents in life? I'm white. Okay, have you seen? Real quick, quick side note. Like, and then we can end the show. Yeah. Have you seen the episode of Family Ties? Have you seen Family Ties ever? No. Okay, Family Ties is. Do um, you know what it is? I've heard of it. Yeah. <coughs> just a sitcom with um, Michael J. Fox. Um, he's, like, a really big overachiever, good at school, like, Republican, conservative, so, like, he's the joke of the show, because mm-hmm. it's in Hollywood, and Hollywood makes liberals um, the king of everything. Look like but heroes. I'm, yeah, but, like, whatever. Like, the, I'm not, it's a whole, it, thing which has is funny, but they have, like, a, the, of course, the stereotypical, like, screw-up idiot neighbor named mm-hmm. Skippy, and um, they're all in high school together. Skippy, um, his name is um, Alex in the show, and then Mallory, I think, is the oldest daughter. They're all in high school together for a little bit. And they go to the job fair at high school, and they take, like, tests and fill all these things, and it's supposed to tell them what they're good at to see what jobs they're going to get in the future. And Skippy's form says, good at inhaling oxygen and exhaling carbon dioxide. (laughs) (coughs) And, like, like, as a kid, like, when I first heard that, I laughed for, like, minutes, dude. Like, that was the funniest joke I'd ever heard. And that's what what I was thinking of. (laughs) Ian's skill set, I'm white. So I'm privileged and get handed things over most people. There was a little joke for, for our um, for our conservative uh, not our conservative friends, our friends. liberal yeah. friends. There liberal we go. Friends, yeah. All right, let's end the show. Thanks for watching. Thanks it's for been watching, good. Guys. Ready? When others are trapped in their beds, that's when I am free. Thanks to booty, 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 booty pajamas. Booty, 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 booty pajamas.
It's fun. Right. We crushed it.